there guys, welcome to the channel, talking with Jay Springer, on today's video, I'm giving you my official first tier list on the channel. Now I really enjoy watching videos like this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too, so I'm going to try and do a lot of these more on the channel, this is something personal and fun to do, this is the Batman movie villains ranked from the worst to the best. Now I have excluded some like Deadshot and Harley Quinn, because I thought they'd not admit a lot of impact to Batman in general, so there may be some missed, if you guys want to obviously add them, and also the animation Batman movies I've not included, if you guys want to add your villains from them, don't forget to comment down below your list, of course. And don't forget, to, if you want to use my tier list, I've made a template. Well, the link for that will be in the description, of course. But without further ado, guys, let's jump straight into it. So guys, we're going to start this tier list with the iconic character of the Joker. Obviously, the most rememberable. When you think Batman, you think Joker. When you think Joker, you think Batman. They're the ones that go against each other the most. The ones we enjoy going together. And obviously, they're, yeah, obviously, this character is just so special, of course. So we're going to start off, obviously, with the Joker, as mentioned. Uh, we're going to go with Jack Nicholson's character. Obviously, the first Joker to be portrayed on a movie. Um, obviously, I'm going to go through the categories quickly before we do this. Um, I've tried to lay out my categories a bit different to most people. I don't like doing the S, A, B, C and all that sort of stuff. The best, awesome, great, good, okay, meh, bad and awful. I think that there's a lot of categories there. Some may not even be used because there's not a lot of villains which we've got here. So, obviously starting off with Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Now, obviously, I'm going to start off with looking at, obviously, the character in general, Harry Looks. I think he looks amazing. I really do. It's one of the best portrayals of the Joker for sure. Um, obviously, this was the one that led it all to start off with. This is the reason why we love the Joker as well as obviously the comics and the animation stuff. Um, but uh, Jack Nicholson really brung something special which leads on to the performance. Looking at him, he looks great. Performing-wise, he is great. He really does suit the character. And the way they done the story, the way they built up the character, I think it was really great. Then we look at his interaction with Batman in the movie. Obviously, that was great as well. It wasn't nothing special compared to, obviously, Heath Ledger's, but really looking at it, there was some great moments between him and Batman. But as well as that, it isn't just about Batman, it's also about Bruce Wayne. I feel like Jack Nicholson also had some great chemistry and some great moments with Bruce Wayne as well. The reveal of, obviously, him turning out to know, obviously, he's Bruce Wayne, and obviously using the woman against Bruce Wayne, and, and, and the way that whole movie went about really was special, and as well as Jack Nicholson performance was just absolutely outstanding so as a whole I really wouldn't say he is the best because I don't think he is the best Joker but I would definitely put him in awesome I think he's an awesome Joker I think he's an awesome actor as well just to add in there as well because the acting wise Jack Nicholson is definitely one of the best out there for sure Heath Ledger's obviously performance uh, we look at the look at the character of course the best looking Joker yeah, of course, it's definitely best looking, best performance when it comes to the Joker. Because this guy, what he put in outside, obviously, of shoot days, when he had to really get himself into the role and stuff like that. He really put a lot into this character and definitely showed what, how much he put effort-wise when it comes to the final piece of the movie, of course. Then we look at his interaction with Batman. I feel like he got a lot of interaction with Batman in that movie. Some really great moments. Now, there wasn't a lot of Bruce moments, but what moments he had with Bruce in that movie was special. And of course, we have to consider um, it's a Batman movie. And really, when it comes to the newer Batman movies, there wasn't much Bruce Wayne compared to the original movie. So, what, what moments we had with, obviously, Bruce, as well as, obviously, Joker in there were great, of course. And there is not one thing wrong about this character he is the best portrayal of the joker for sure there's no doubt in my mind and i've never heard anybody say different i never heard anybody say it was overrated he's overrated or it was an overrated performance i would never heard anyone say it was a terrible performance or an okay performance i've never heard anyone say that about the character now a lot of this may be due to obviously the, the sudden death obviously of Heath Ledger, maybe, but really, I, I, I do, it's not nothing to do with the death of the character, it's just the character in general, the performance of the man, everything that went into that character really was the best portrayal. 
Obviously, Jared Leto's Suicide Squad Joker. Now, a lot of people would probably put this man's performance in awful or bad. Me, I don't think it was a terrible performance. I think there was something that intrigued me to see this guy's performance when I first see the trailer of the Suicide Squad. Now, the problem with this movie and the problem with the character, it was there was minimal action when it comes to the character in the movie, and they cut a lot of his stuff out. Uh, obviously, the look can trouble some people. It's obviously in terms of... It's, it's sort of like opinionated, really. It's sort of like preference. It's sort of if you like the look of it or if you don't. It's the same with the other two characters, really. You could sit there and say Jack Nicholson looks terrible as a Joker. You really could. But really, it's all due to preference when it comes to a character. And this character, I feel like it wasn't the best-looking character. He, so he isn't going to be out there the best for sure. Um, and he still looked great as a Joker. I do believe that. So at the moment, he's sitting sort of on the great tier. We look at his performance. I feel like it was an okay performance. Obviously, we didn't see a lot, as I've mentioned. They cut a lot of the stuff out. So that knocks him down to okay. When it comes to interaction with Batman, there was very minimal action when it comes to that sort of stuff. Um, it was mainly his interaction with Harley Quinn um, and obviously the Suicide Squad. So there wasn't really any action between Batman and obviously Bruce Wayne. And not only that, obviously, Batman was just a cameo. So... Really, that sort of knocks it down to meh, because there was nothing really memorable about the character. I'm really going to put him on the meh, meh section. But the Penguin, Danny DeVito, obviously playing a role. When you look at Danny DeVito, he suits the Penguin absolutely perfectly. So looking-wise, straight away, it's a perfect fit. He definitely is the best portrayal of the Penguin, and probably one of the only ones apart from the animation series. Um, so obviously, he's up there with the best on this, on this subject. When it comes to performances, I think he had a great performance. I don't think it was outstanding. I do think it was great though. So that knocks him down to sort of great sort of area. And when it comes to threat to Batman, I feel like he was a threat to Batman. When it comes to interaction with Bruce Wayne, I think it was very minimal, but there was some interaction there. And when it comes to threat to these guys, and when it comes to obviously the character's portrayal when it comes to the comics and stuff, I think this is one of the closest you're going to get to that. So really, I'm thinking he's going to be a great... Uh, sort of area there sort of I'd probably put him in between great and awesome really then we go on to Scarecrow now Scarecrow is obviously an iconic character when it comes to the Batman especially if you played the video games you know for a fact that he's one of the special moments in them video games for sure some you get some really cool missions in there but when it comes to the movies though I really did enjoy the performance as a whole I think he looked the part I even when he was without the mask I think he looked the part the performance as a whole was great I really did enjoy it. Um, when it comes to his threat to Batman, I think it was very high, highly a threat. When it comes to Bruce Wayne, though, it was very minimal. I don't think there was much contact between them. When it comes to threat towards the city, obviously it's very high because obviously the drugs that are released throughout the city and stuff like that. There was a lot of threat. So um, when it comes to Scarecrow, I'm definitely going to put him in the great section. I think he was a great villain for the Batman movies. Jim Carrey's The Riddler. Now a lot of people would probably put this guy in bad or awful um i'm not gonna put him that nowhere near that low i love jim carrey i love his movies i love his performance as the riddler he's definitely one of the best the only person i can say that's played better as the riddler in my opinion is the gotham tv series character i really love the gotham actor who played uh, the riddler i really preferred him to jim carrey but the way they used this character was a nutty uh, sort of character which really suited Jim Carrey to perfection really when it comes to it when he he looked the part as well not only that obviously the red hair was quite annoying at times when it comes to him with the suit on without the suit with just him and the stick doing the riddles everything I think he really looked the part his threat to Batman was very good in the movie his threat to Bruce Wayne was quite okay in the movie obviously because he really was questioning the character throughout the movie obviously doing the riddles and stuff I don't think there was nothing great though against Batman and his threat to the city was okay as well. Nothing amazing. Well, I'm gonna put Jim Carrey as a good villain. I don't think he. I don't think he was mad or nothing like that. It was it's between okay and good for me, really. The oh, Mr. Pun. I'm gonna call him. Um, it's such a shame because Arnold Schwarzenegger as an actor is absolutely phenomenal. Definitely one of the best action heroes, of course, out there. And I would have felt if you would have felt like this at the time, you would have felt Arnold Schwarzenegger would suit Mr. Freeze for sure. But what I'm gonna start with, obviously, is the look 
I think he looks the part. I really do. I think he suits Mr. Freeze as the look. Then we go on to the performance. I think what the problem is with this movie isn't the performance of the actor. I think it's obviously the script and the writing behind this character. It's just absolutely awful, just like the movie. Um, so, yeah, obviously you have to really take it that into consideration. His threat to Batman in the movie was okay. His threat to Bruce really was quite minimum. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put him in the bad tier i'm gonna put him in the bad gel pfeiffer as catwoman of course this is probably in my opinion the best portrayal obviously the first portrayal was catwoman as well she was seductive she was sexy she was really interacting well with bruce as well as batman in the movie obviously penguin as well uh, i thought like she was a great villain in in the movie really i do the look of her is great the performance is great I really enjoy her threat to Batman as well as Bruce, as well as the villains in the movie, because obviously you know what Catwoman's like. She can turn on anybody, whether it's Bruce or a villain. She's got that way. They really portray that well. The whole build-up to the story of how she becomes Catwoman is great as well. So really, I'm going to put her on the great tier as well. Who face obviously, Tommy Lee Jones. It's such a shame for this man, because obviously the, the character, like the actor himself, is obviously outstanding. He could definitely easily, with his eyes closed, do this performance. It was the lines of the movie, the writing again of the movie, the look of the character just didn't really go with me. Obviously, as a kid, when I watched this, this was like, yeah, this is amazing. But really, looking at it now as I've grown up, you can see the problems with this character, the problem the way he looks. Really, I can't, I just can't... I, He's going on the bad. He's going on the bad tier. Raj Al Ghul played by Liam Neeson. So what we take into this consideration is the look of the character. He may not look these the spitting image of Raj Al Ghul from the comics. Um, but I do think they've done quite well with the look. When it comes to the performance, you've got one of the best action of actors out there pretty much. He is great. He's one of the top tier actors out there for sure. So he performs outstandingly in this movie for sure. Threat to Batman is a, a massive threat if you think about it because the story of him training Bruce to become Batman is a massive threat him to Bruce again him training Bruce knowing Bruce and causing a threat to the city is massive he does a massive massive threat to the city everything as a whole I think he's fighting with the with the obviously hero in the movie there wasn't a lot of major stuff when it comes to fighting obviously Liam Neeson being at a certain age but what we see of it was great I'm going to put him in awesome uh, I absolutely love Liam Neeson. I love his performance as the character. I, I really couldn't change much about it. So at the moment, we've only got two categories that are actually free at the moment, which is okay and awful. And guess what? We have Bane straight in the awful section. This is criminal the way they treat this character. Now, the movie, I can understand, is terrible. The writing is terrible. The script is terrible. The way the movie looked, the way they treated their actors is terrible. But the way they treated this character, one of the most iconic characters in Batman history, in terms of television, comics, movies, they they they, they, they just, just deserve to be locked up and not be let out. They really do. It is just criminal. Going on to the right portrayal, obviously Tom Hardy playing as obviously Bane himself. I think his threat to Batman was amazing. That's the one thing I want to say. The fights with Batman were completely insane. Really great. He tested Bruce because obviously Bruce had to really train hard to go against Bane physically. That's the one thing that was really great about Bane physically. He tested Batman to the limits really. Um... And I really think he caused a lot of threat to the city, of course. I think he obviously was a bit, the best portrayal of the Bane, of course, that we've seen so far. Um, I think when it comes to looking at the character, I think he looks okay. That's the one thing I, I definitely would suggest that they could have changed. Um, and apart from that, I, I hear a lot of people saying about how they couldn't really understand him with the mask. But really, when it comes to Bane, I think that is the best portrayal. Um, I think Tom Hardy obviously gives a great performance as Bane, one of his best. Um, so yeah, he's definitely going up there in the best. Catwoman, again obviously in The Dark Knight Rises. I do enjoy this role. I don't think it's as good as Michelle Pfeiffer's performance in my opinion. I do like, obviously she looks better as the, the Catwoman, I do admit that. I do think she's a lot more better looking, obviously, than Michelle Pfeiffer. So that does go in her favour. I do think a threat towards Bruce and uh, obviously Batman is 
probably about the same in my opinion. I don't think there's much difference. Um, to the city, I, I, I don't think there's much really. Uh, I, for me, I think it's an okay. That's just my opinion. Carmine Falcone, obviously a top villain when it comes to the Batman stuff. I really think Carmine Falcone was really played well in Gotham. The whole story behind the character, I think it was really portrayed well. Um, in this case, there wasn't really much behind the character, really. There was nothing memorable, really, if I'm honest. He was okay, and he's, the main thing for him was the conversation with Bruce. Uh, I think he was a good threat to Bruce, but nothing to Batman, obviously, of course. Um, obviously, when he got into the nut house, he went completely insane. So, it was a meh performance for me. I, I don't think there was nothing outstanding when it comes to the character. Two-Face, the newer one, obviously, from the Dark Knight. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this portrayal. I think this is a much better performance, obviously. the best. Let's just say it's the best... Two-Face performance, in my opinion. Better than, obviously, Tommy Lee Jones, of course. I do prefer this this actor. I think he's one of them underrated actors that goes under the radar. Doesn't really get seen for what he does. And since then, he hasn't really caught a break, really. It's been unlucky for him. Uh, I think this was... The way he looked was outstanding before he was Two-Face. When he came Two-Face, it was really detailed on how they made him look. His threat to Bruce uh, was... Really minimal, in my opinion. His threat to Batman was a bigger threat, but nothing outstandingly threat, because really, the character, if you think about it, the character really wasn't used as Two-Face. He was used more as the human version of Two-Face, Two -Face, really, if you think about it. Um, his threat to the city was quite minimal, really. It was a big icon figure towards the city before he came Two-Face, but apart from that, really, there was nothing outstanding with the character i'm putting him on the good category now we're going on to the final villain poison ivy obviously in batman and robin as we've seen when it comes to batman and robin the villains are bad and awful this one's a bit different i'm not even going to put her on meh because i feel like she had a top form she looked great as a character the way she expressed her lines was great she's got that experience obviously behind the actress she's great the way she calls a threat to batman in this movie and robin was great i do enjoy that when it comes towards Bruce as well, because obviously Bruce is under the Batman mask throughout the majority of this movie, really there was minimal threat to Bruce, apart from obviously when they she sort of that, sprays that dust all over him, that love dust, I want to call it, um, obviously hypnotizes him. Um, but apart from that, and obviously towards the city, obviously all the plants and stuff, she does cause havoc. So I do think she was more of a threat than Bane and obviously Mr. Freeze in this movie. I'm not going to put her in okay, because I do think she's worth more than that. Actually, no, I'm going to put her in okay. I think it was she's an okay villain. So guys, that is pretty much my list obviously ranking from awful to the best um, when it comes to villains in the Batman movies. Obviously, I've missed out obviously Lego Batmans, the animation Batmans in general. I've missed out a Harley Quinn, de de obviously uh, Deadshot. I've missed out a few. Obviously, if you guys want to add them, don't forget, as I've mentioned, comment down below yours. And also, if you want to use my template, which I've used right here, don't forget to obviously use the link in the description. You guys can use that, of course, as well i'd love to see you guys send me them through twitter or stuff that'd be great i really would like to see your list in general and guys if you enjoyed this video smash that thumbs up button let's share the video around for other people to enjoy as well as obviously let's know you enjoy the content i'm giving you to give you more tier lists just like this one now i could obviously do other villains i could obviously do heroes i could do a bunch of stuff so if you have any recommendations don't forget to comment them down below or if you want to obviously add me on twitter at jspring at 94 i normally send send polls out on there which you guys can obviously vote for the next review and stuff like that and also i'd like to hear you guys what you want on the channel of course so maybe you could let me know on twitter as well that's a great way of doing it and guys if you want to add me on letterboxd the account will be in the description as well and if you're new here guys consider subscribing and hitting that bell for much much more movies and tv series content so without further ado guys thank you very much i've been me you've been you and i'll see you next time guys on talking with jay spring it